Beyond Meat second quarter results just hitting the tape right now. And let's go to Julia LaRoche in our newsroom for a breakdown. Julia, uh, not too much reaction in the stock so far, although it was uh, down in the regular session. Uh, can you give us uh, the breakdown? Yeah, Jen, the news here is that the company crushed expectations when it comes to revenue for the second quarter. Beyond Meat delivered revenue of $67.3 million. That topped analyst expectations of $52.7 million. As for the earnings per share, it was a loss of $0.24 cents per share. Analysts were expecting a loss of $0.08 cents per share. Another headline that I will highlight is that the company raised its full-year guidance. The company now expects net revenues to exceed $240 million. That is up from 210 million previously. So again, the news here, a nice beat on the revenue side, a uh, little bit bigger loss than expected on the earnings per share and the company raising its full year outlook. Jen, back to you. Uh, Julia LaRoche going through the numbers here. Uh, Julia talking about the outlook uh, for net revenues are also saying on adjusted EBITDA, they see that to be positive compared to the prior expectation of a break even adjusted EBITDA. And of course, they speak in adjusted EBITDA because this company, you know, still is losing money. It still has a loss in here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they, as she said, just crushed on, the, uh, on that revenue number. But it is the future of protein today. Mm. At least that's what they say on their website. I don't know if you guys have tried the products. I mean, mm. it's interesting because it's not a new thing, right? I mean, these guys just got it right at the right time. I mean, these alternative burgers have been around since we were little kids. Well, vegan burgers. Right? Vegan burgers. It's but but the technology yeah. has gotten better and better and better and better and it better. It tastes better. Right. That's, yeah, there's that. I mean, that, right? it just, uh, you know, feel, it, it, it tastes, it feels, that's the whole idea, right? To and be then, like meat. And these guys are the dominant player, right? I mean, so it's just the right time, well, right they're the, place. They're the dominant player, and they're also the first mover in terms of coming to market, right? With the with the right product, because like right we product. were saying, they've been there around for a while. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I wonder with this company, I feel like there there are two big question marks, which is the demand side of things, and then the capacity yeah. concerns. Um, and especially capacity as they continue to scale pretty quickly here. Uh, let's bring in Lou Bassanese, disruptive tech research founder, to weigh in on Beyond Meat's earnings report. So, uh, Lou, we're just looking over the numbers here. Uh, what stands out to you? Is there anything that surprises you? Look, we were talking about the demand side. I mean, a huge beat on the top line, which shows that there's more demand than we anticipated. Um, I, I think that brings up the question, is there enough capacity to keep striking partnerships to keep up with uh, with demand because you got to think about this the more this beyond meat gets out there in the stores in different places the more people are going to be asking and looking for it in other places so can they keep up with that demand um the crazy thing is though I, there's a quote talking from the ceo saying that it's fascinating to be part of a brand that becomes a movement unfortunately i think eventually it becomes a massacre we've seen this happen before with these faddish companies uh, or trends and the mania gives way to a huge stock decline, which I think is ultimately what we're setting up for here. Um, but it's anyone's guess when that inflection and tipping point is going to be to the downside. Well, how much of that decline that you see um, has a, has to do with the competition? I mean, we talked a lot about big names like Tyson Foods getting in on this space as well. Uh, they obviously have the benefit of scale. How do you think Beyond Meat um, continues to scale up in the face of that kind of competition coming from the big name players? Look, if I'm Beyond Meat, I'm raising tons of capital at these elevated uh, valuations so that you can aggressively roll up uh, competition, that you can expand, you can uh, invest in expanding capacity. I and mean, we saw this last year, if you remember, with the marijuana craze in Tilray, right? I mean, that stock had a stratospheric move, almost like Beyond Meats, uh, and that's exactly what they did. They struck a lot of partnerships. They raised plenty of capital. You know, at some point, the partnerships are going to lose their um, the impact on the stock, you know, after after a while, investors start to it's kind of becomes ho hum. Oh, there's just another partnership. So again, this is a purely momentum stock right now, uh, trading at a triple digit price to sales ratio, which is which is unheard of, right? I mean, the average company in the S and P 500 trades at like two times sales historically. So um, they've got th these numbers. This beat though, I got to give them credit. This this beat on the top line uh, is certain to keep the momentum investors plugged into what's going on here for quarters to come. How proprietary do you think this is? And what kind of moat does this company have around it? Or is it just that simple for someone else to get in and make a like product? Look, I think we're talking about plant-based proteins here. So we have plenty of food companies that are in the plant business. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look at the IP. I don't remember seeing that they have any uh, very specific and particular IP. Uh, and that's a problem, right? I mean, we saw this happen 
uh, and social media. Skype had no patents and Facebook just rips them off, everything they invent. So, uh, you know, beyond me, this is, you mentioned it earlier, they, they have the first mover advantage, uh, but the downside to that is they're basically teaching the competitors what the market demands. And, uh, you know, I think that's a real competitive threat as we move forward here.